morning, everybody. How are we doing this morning? If you guys would go ahead and like to stand with us, we can begin our time of worship here. Um, so this first song is going to be a new one. Um, it's called Jehovah. So um, I was just going to run you through the bridge here um, because there's a couple names that you uh, might recognize, might not. We can run through them. So um, the first one is Jehovah Nisi, which is uh, Jehovah, my banner. Um, so it says Jehovah Nisi, fight, fight your battles. And then the next one is Jehovah Jireh, which is uh, Jehovah, my provider, God, my provider. Um, so it says Jehovah Jireh, meet your needs. Jehovah Rapha, um, God, my healer. Um, God, my healer, heal your body. And Jehovah Shalom, uh, God, my peace. And then it says Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. So we can start the song. Um, just figured we'd run you guys through all that. So. Shames every idol. He reigns without rival. He goes by the name of Jehovah. Jehovah. He speaks into nothing, and darkness goes running. goes by the name of Jehovah, Jehovah. Call the name, call the name, call the name Jehovah. All our praise, all our praise, all our praise belongs to Him. will be silent He's fighting for Zion There's no other God like Jehovah Jehovah His arm never tires His eyes are like fire Fight your battles, Jehovah Nisi. 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 Fight your battles, Jehovah Jireh. Meet your need. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Jehovah Jireh, meet your need. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Call the name, call the name, call the name, Jehovah. All our praise, all our praise, all our praise belongs to Him. Jehovah 
when you see fight your battles Jehovah Jireh meets your need Jehovah Rapha heal your body Jehovah Shalom be your peace
and I got some eggs out, and I got a half of a cup of vegetable oil, some olive oil cooking spray, and three tablespoons of water. Together, they all taste terrible. But if you put them together, and you bake them for 24 minutes at 350 degrees, they'll make the best batch of brownies you ever tasted, thanks to a box. The reason I'm telling you that is because by themselves, each ingredient is nothing. But when you put them together, and you can make something great out of them. Luke chapter 7, verse 36 says, When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Well, a woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind, behind him at his feet weeping, she began to, to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair. She kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he knew who, he, who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had any money to pay him back, so he forgave both debts. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said, and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet her feet with her te- my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You do not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this that even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. That woman's kind of like the brownies that I made. By herself, she's a mess. By herself, she serves no purpose. By themselves, the eggs, the oil, and the flour and the sugar serve no purpose. But when you put them together, you can make something beautiful out of them, just like what Jesus did with this sinful woman. He made her life into a masterpiece. And if anybody here's life is a mess, if anybody here needs God to make them into something great, I invite you to trust him, to worship him, and to allow him to make your life into a masterpiece. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day, dear Lord Jesus. I thank you for this communion that we're about to partake of, dear Lord. I pray, Father, that anybody in the sound of my voice, dear Lord, whether in the sanctuary, in Facebook land, or on YouTube, I pray, Father, that you will bless them, that they will give their heart to you, they will give their life to you, they will give their cares, their worries, their concerns, and their frustrations to you. And you will take all of those ingredients and you will make them into a masterpiece, dear Father. Thank you again, Lord, for your will. In Jesus' name, amen. First, he took the bread, which was broken for the forgiveness of sins. And then he took the cup, which was poured out for the remission of sins, and commanded us to drink of it. Let's pray for the offering. For those that are... That one too, there's offering boxes in the back. There's also one up here on the table that you can give your offering to. Father, we thank you for these gifts that you've given us, dear Lord. I pray, Father, that as we give them back to you, dear Lord, that you will use them to grow your kingdom, to grow this church, that we might be a church on the move for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? My 
Remind me once again just who I am Because I need to know Oh, you say I am loved When, when I can feel a thing You say I am strong When I think I am weak You say I am held When I am falling short That matters now is everything you think of me. In you I find my worth, in you I find my identity. Oh, you say I am loved when I can feel a thing, and you say I am strong. God, you'll have every victory. There's some pictures up here on the screen of some of the things that we have been doing over the last couple of weeks. I've got Ben Zirkelbach. Where is Ben hiding? There he is. Ben's going to come up here and describe some of our fiascos, or not fiascos, our uh, wonderful journey. So come on up here, buddy. As he's coming up, let's pray together and we'll jump into some of that uh, story. Father, we thank you so much for this time of gathering. We thank you for these songs that we've been singing of identity and purpose and direction, that our identity is found in you alone, Jesus, that you are our grace and our mercy and our salvation, that we can have life in and through you. And because of that, we have this great opportunity to serve and to tell the rest of the world of your love and grace. Thank you again for your provisions. Thank you for this great mission trip that's taken place over the last few weeks. Thank you for the provision of clean, good water for Chogo and the people of that village. Thank you once again for showing us love that we can spend eternity with you through the great price that you paid for us on the cross. It's in your almighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
So we'll start off. We got some pictures up on the screen. I'll let Ben kind of describe them. By the way, how many of you knew this was Ben's first time to be on an airplane? So we broke him in gently with, uh, what, 45 hours of flying? So. Yeah, several hours of layovers. All right, so go ahead, Ben. Here, wait, let's give Ben a microphone. Is this one good? Hello. So, first of all, I'm very thankful that I was able to go. I'm thankful just everybody. Put that right in your mouth. Right here? There you go. All right. <laughs> I'm very thankful I was able to go. I'm very grateful of having such a great church family. to everybody. But um, the first couple pictures here are of us on Zanzibar Island reading. Oh, okay. The next photo. Oh, wait. <laughs> so the first photo... Oh, we're switching again. Oh, no, we're not. One more time? No, okay. No, this is uh, good. Oh, okay. All right, so this photo right here is us at the HCA. It's a school they have. They're on Zanzibar Island for kids. Yeah, so this was a school for kids. There's like 550 kids in this, and the guy that started the whole program was uh, at the age of like 10 or 10 or 11, thrown out of his house. He couldn't pass the secondary test, so he was thrown out on the streets by himself. And uh, some gentleman came along and found him yeah. and uh, taught him English. And so now he's the principal of this school, taking in all these kids and speaks perf- better English than probably Ben and I. So. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to see a couple of pictures here, and uh, Ben will describe them. So on the picture to the left, it is the boys' room there They uh, for orphan boys. Yeah, so there's about 20 kids that were living at the school because they had no home. So they live in this small room here with just a couple of mattresses, and there's about 20 boys and 20 girls that were living there all the time in that room. So this is the classroom they have there. And the courtyard, and we got to have the chance to read children books to them, and they were very great. They listened, and we got to take photos with them, and they just came up, and they wouldn't stop shaking our hands. Was... Yeah, so the big, the big deal with this school was that uh, Zanzibar Island is about 99% Muslim, and so this is, we're actually one of the first Christian groups to get the opportunity to work within the school systems. Um, so you notice that a lot of the girls are wearing the Muslim uh, head gar- headgear. So uh, it was really neat that we got to spend some time and work within the school system. Do you, know, do you know what's happening here? That's you at the Rotary Club. <laughs> All right. So there's a, there's a man here in the picture. is the president of the Rotary Club over there, and I'm a part of the Rotary here in Mount Vernon. Um, but what we're positioning for and not to promote necessarily we love the rotary but we're not here to promote that but what we're trying to work on is a fifty thousand dollar grant between two rotaries where they go in and change a village with a water well uh it can be water well it can be school projects it can be uh bathrooms things of that nature hygiene so that's a what we're working with with their rotary club in zanzibar i also got his chess so I'm going to play him in chess oh, yeah. these days. <laughs> so that is us. What is it? We're going to be building a church there, and we are building corner posts, putting in corner posts to designate where the land was. A bunch of photos of that. We were clearing brush and moving it over to a burn pile. And it was a farm at one point, right? Mm-hmm. We were mixing concrete just on the ground. Should us dig in holes. Yeah, so our work on Zanzibar Island was it was exploratory. We uh, are just starting to have a footprint in on the island. Uh, this is actually land that GCDI actually owns there now, 
Uh, they're going to be doing Christian ministry work through that, like church camps and things of that nature, to start planting the seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ within the community. Um, we did have, like when we were here working on the property, clearing it, um, we weren't really supposed to be talking to the community people at that moment, just because of the sensitive nature of it, um, to have a actual Christian presence within the heart of such a, you know, Muslim uh, population. So, this is a picture of us on a boat. We were headed out to what's called the Sinking Island and the Turtle Island. They're two different islands, and one of them is just more like a sandbar. But this one is Turtle Island. It's a. It was a huge reservation for turtles because was it the Solomon? Saudi Arabians, yeah, the Arabians. He was a prince, and he was gifted these huge tortoises, and it was like 50 at first, 50, 20, 40. There were four of them initially. Four, okay, four, whoa. Two male, two females. And it's a Galapagos. You guys familiar with Galapagos Islands, the tortoise? That's what these are, Galapagos tortoise. And now they're up to, what, 150? Yeah, there's over 150 of them on the island. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one of them that was there was like 150 years old. Oh, yeah, he was old. He's yeah. big. And he stepped on my foot, too. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of hurt. And this is one of the boats we took over from Zanzibar to the mainland. It was, it's a big boat. It was huge. And is this the mainland? This is Chogo. This is yeah. Chogo. Okay. This is where we did the dig site at. Some of the kids there. This is us at Sunday service. That little kid on the right on Miss Kim's lap there, she, he's, a, he's a little troublemaker. He kept trying to take my phone. I'd try to show him photos to take photos with him, and he, every time he got the chance, he would try to run off with my phone. I had a hard time catching him. So we had church service outside because there was a, too large of a group. Their church building was literally smaller probably than our stage up here, and so we had church service outside. But one of the things I want to remind you of is that so often we take for granted our opportunity and privilege to be able to join in church and to worship. Um, in those locations, we had literally had people that had walked over six miles to be at church service that morning in an outdoor church service. You know, it's a, uh, they by no means take for granted the opportunity to praise and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that is the dig site right there. That's the drill going down. How deep did we say it was? 180 meters when they got So it? we drilled right at 640 to 650 on this one. We were hoping to be at about 600 or just a hair under. And so um, it cost a little bit more, but not we had budgeted to be able to do that. Got to go back. It's another photo of us here at the dig site. So it's watching it. There's that little troublemaker again on that right side there with Mr. Greg. <laughs> he would try to take any of our phones, any chance he got. But some more dig site photos. And it was on the second day, I believe, second or third day, we hit water. That night, I think the second night we hit water. And then that's us getting piping in, and that's clean drinking water right there. And that's us, we're digging a spot where we can put the huge water tank at. So they'll have a place to store the water. And that's, is that a mattress? Or is that a concrete slab? I think it's a mattress. But they treat you guys like Say again? But they treat you guys like Yeah, they did. So before we finish up on the water slides, uh, we did get clean water. Uh, it's the best we've ever had as far as the soft quality of it. And the, uh, our water test came back. Everything was good. We just sent in this last week, uh, the generator and the water tank, so all that's being hooked up as of yesterday. It should be done by now. And in that video, you can see the amount of water that is coming out. Uh, we hit water at about 600, in, about 600 feet. And we go down about another 30 to 40 feet so that the water table is there where it can keep replenishing. Our goal in these wells is to make wells that will last longer than the people last for generations to come. So 
a lot of outfits will do water wells that are 100, 150 foot deep, but they don't sustain, they won't last, where these will last. We have had to replace pumps and generators, things of that nature before, but uh, we've been getting educated over time, so now we spend a lot more money on heavy-duty commercial diesel generators and uh, pumps, and we bought the same for this project. Pictures up here right now are of Pastor Daniel's school in Pwani area of Tanzania. Um, we were not in Bigwa. No, we didn't make it all the way down to that area. This is the One Fish Center. Yeah, one of the cool things, and hold up on this picture here for a minute. Or That's fine. Um, but one thing cool with the kids, you'll notice that in all the schools, they were in uniforms. How many of you like to wear uniforms at school? I know we got some that did. <laughs> you know, it's not something we desire necessarily as kids, but the reason they do it is because some of these kids are homeless or coming from absolutely, you know, poverty situation, and they want every kid to be, you know, to feel or not to be, you know, to feel normal or apart, um, rather than separated out because they don't have school clothes. And this is one of our newest endeavors. This is a picture of a orphanage. Um, the picture on the left is of a child. There's about 14 to 15 of these kids right now that are living outside of home. And uh, so Pastor Daniel is wanting to purchase land right next to the school to build an orphanage. So it's one of those things that myself and others are trying to help out with. So just keep that in mind. You'll probably hear a lot more of that coming in the days ahead. That's us on the entrance to Mgoro Goro. It wasn't too far, and we got up really high. There's a lot of hippos there. There's a lot of animals, all sorts of amazing animals. Will the bees... Zebras, it would be right up next to our car. They weren't scared of us at all. <laughs> There's a hyena. <laughs> See, I was trying to show the progression of things. You had the wildebeest, the zebras, to the lions, and then the hyena. And what, you sent that picture of the hyena right with a picture of me <laughs> to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so the Angoro Angoro crater is a 12-foot mile radius volcano crater it's the largest location in the world of the big five animals uh, which includes you know rhino elephant actually zebra aren't included in that but water buffalo and some of the other big cats so giraffes are not in the crater because uh, of the tree line and stuff so they they're outside of it you can see them although we didn't see them no. sorry about that <laughs> it was a rainy rainy day so we didn't get to see them any other things you want to share, Mr. Circlebach? No. What was your biggest impression of the trip? Um, I just think the love everybody had for everything, the fact that everybody was just all together coming in as one family, and the, just that everybody came together that one Sunday to the whole church. It was storming really bad, but they all came together for church service. All right. Thanks, Ben. You know, as always on these trips, one of the things that impresses me or that is always on my mind is how hard life is in that part of the world, uh, what little resources they have to be able to make ends meet, and somehow they continue to do it, but we are there to show the love of Jesus Christ and to bring them a gift from the church to show them how much Jesus loves them and to provide something that is desperate there. And so when we provide water, it's like providing gold to people. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we always tell people, you know, don't drink any water unless it's out of a bottle. Um, and, you know, we give the lectureship, of course, about food and all that sort of thing. And so one person got really, really sick while he was over there from water stuff. That was me. So I said, I said a, said a bad example, but praise God. I always say God's timing is perfect. 
Uh, we literally made it back to the hotel from finishing the well, and I was down and sick. So I slept for about 20 hours over the next two days, and then I was good to go. So anyways, it worked out. In our scripture today, we're going to be talking about a parable that Jesus shares, um, and, it, and it's reference to prayer. The first thing we look at in it is this, this question. If, is it froze? Oh, what should I learn or do? So every time I go over to Tanzania, it's a great opportunity. It's awesome to be able to do that kind of work. But I always come back and I always kind of go through a little bit of depression, sadness, because I'm overwhelmed with all the resources and stuff that we all have. You know, uh, when we're on a trip like that, you know, I tend to think, oh, you know, how inconvenient that I've got to use a water bottle to brush my teeth with. The other group from Cambria, the guys were telling me that they were so worried about it that they were literally washing their hair with bottled water because they didn't want water going over their face. I don't think we have to be quite... But I'm not the one to speak since I'm the one that got sick. So anyway, but, you know, I'm always always overwhelmed by how much we have, how much waste we have and all those sorts of things. And so this question comes up again and again for us as Christian people. What should I learn or do? What should I really be about? You know, so often we spend so much time doing stuff or doing work. What is it as a Christian man or woman should I really be about and putting my money or resources into. As we look at this message, it says in verse 1, One day Jesus was in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. So what do the disciples want to know? They wanted to know what they should say or how they should pray. Um, let me tell you the big difference between Jesus and modern day Christianity for the most part. Do you know how long it would take for a modern day Christianity to explain how we should pray? I mean, we could probably do it in a two or three hour seminar, right? Or a half a day seminar or two days. How long did it take Jesus to explain to him how to pray? And say it was just a few sentences up here. Can we see that again? Yeah, so he said, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. And that was his how we should pray. Why do you think Jesus was so simple with teaching and how he taught People to pray. I mean, what's it consist of? Ultimately, what I want us to understand, or as I've been looking at it, is it ultimately consists of who are we addressing? How would be the name of God? That in prayer we are talking to a God that has created us and also rescued us. And that in that we have this relationship and so we're speaking to God. On it goes to ask for our daily needs and to ask God provision in those things. But we know that God cares about us more intimately than we know or care for ourselves. The next part we look at on it is Jesus goes into a discussion about being persistent. Are you all persistent people? Have you ever really, really wanted something? How many of you grew up in a household where... If you wanted to buy something, your parents made you work for it. Maybe this is becoming a lost trait, but you had to work for it. You had to mow lawns, you had to do chores, anything possible to raise it. Being persistent paid off. When we read in the scriptures, Jesus told them how to pray, but then he goes into this. He says, then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, friend, Lend me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him 
the bread because he is a friend, yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Now, think about the story. What is this saying? Here you got this guy. It's after hours. He's at home. He's in bed. Um, his whole family is together. They're down for the night. The doors are locked. Somebody comes knocking on the door wanting to borrow some bread or to be given some bread. You, can you think of that? You ever been woke up in the middle of the night by one of your friends? I can tell you this. If you're going to wake me up in the middle of the night, it better be for a really important reason, right? So when I was in Tanzania, and I was talking about this one night I got sick, you know, I went immediately to my room, took care of, you know, business, came out of my room after that, knocked on Jeff Reed, the missionary's door, and said, hey, I'm out for the night, just leave me alone. Well, someone in their marvelous thinking of the group thought it would be wise for them to bring me my dinner for the night, which was fish and rice, whole fish, by the way. So this guy comes knocking on my door, and I'm like, very nicely, but in my mind, I was saying, just leave me alone, get out of here. I didn't open the door because I wanted dinner. I was opening the door just to get rid of him. In this story, it talks about being persistent that this person was knocking at the door. And the reason that the guy got up and gave him bread was not because he was his buddy or his friend, but it was because of his boldness, his persistence. Now, I don't want us to get the wrong impression. Does that mean, from what we hear in this story, that God is telling us that if we pray with this kind of persistence and boldness, that God's going to answer our prayers because we won't shut up? Or is it saying that the principle, the characteristic of someone who knows the purpose and plan for a life, their identity in Jesus Christ, what God has directed us to be doing for His kingdom, helping and serving the poor, reaching out to those in need, doing His will here on earth? Does that mean that we are to be persistent in doing those things? I think the latter is probably the situation. Don't give up. How many of you need to hear that this morning? How many of you sometimes you feel like, Man, I keep on trying with my kids, my family, my grandkids. I keep on trying with my neighbors at work. doesn't seem like people want to listen. I try to tell them about Jesus or I try to be good. I try to do good things and all I get in return is bad or somebody mistreating me. Do you ever feel that way? Do you ever feel like throwing in the towel or giving up? I'm certain we all have felt that way at certain times. But Jesus tells his disciples, don't give up. Keep it simple. This is how you are to pray. Talk to me. Worship me. Serve me. Knowing that all provision, all blessing, all the things that are are from God. And that we should trust in Him. Boy, I tell you. That's why I say when I came, I come back from Tanzania, I'm always so overwhelmed because I have way too much stuff. Anybody else want to admit that publicly today? You know, I remember the time that Pastor Emmanuel and Paul and some of them came over here to the USA. And I took them down to A180. Any of you all remember the A180 resale shop? And I took them down there to show them this is how we are providing for wells and things. And they're like, where did all this stuff come from? And how do I answer that? Well, it's all the stuff we've thrown away. So out of our throwaway... We can give you water. Now, does that sound absolutely ridiculous? In, in our minds, in our hearts, you know, how out of the resources. So I remember a, a missionary by the name of Earl Hobner telling a story about 30 years ago where he was telling about how a church in uh, Brazil had got together their people and they were going to build a church building. And so they asked everybody to give sacrificially. Have you ever been asked to give sacrificially in a church? And of course, I don't want you to get the wrong impression that if we ask you to give sacrificially, the church isn't about your money. Remember my sermon on that? If you think the church wants your money this morning, keep it. Because that's a stinking money to the Lord. The Lord wants the money given out of 
love and stewardship to him, realizing who's in charge, that it's God, and he's the one that gives the cattle on a thousand hills, and that he will bless that. But in that story of Earl Hobner, he was talking about this church and that people were literally selling their TVs. Well, haven't you all done that before? I mean, those big old box TVs, we give them away, right? For the sake of the ministry, for God's kingdom. And one guy gave away his motorcycle. Have any of you ever done that before? Given away a vehicle or something for the sake of the church or ministry? But here's the kicker. The person that sold their TV, guess what? They had no TV. They didn't run out to Walmart and buy the latest model. They went without a TV. And the guy that gave his motorcycle, guess what? He walked literally six miles one way to work every single day so that the church was giving to was sacrificial giving. You remember the story of the widow's mite? As Jesus watched all the people giving their money for the purpose of the temple and his services, he watched all those people come forward and dump in that money. And then he said to the disciples, which one do you think gave the most money? And who did he say? He said the widow that gave two mites. Why was it that she gave so much? Because she gave everything she had, while the others gave out of the resources of what they had, the overflow. Point being in this. We hear God talking about being persistent. Jesus Christ teaching his disciples to be persistent. But for you and I, we shall never give up. We have to press on, continuing to do the good work. And I hear it all the time. People will say to me things of this nature. Well, when are you going to start working on another well? When are you going to start raising money for another well? Do you all know my answer to that? Yeah, when did we ever stop? When does it ever stop? You know, if it's an orphanage, if it's a school, if it's a church, whatever the case be, we continue to persist because we know what's at stake. My friends, I want to share with you today that sometimes it gets frustrating, it gets discouraging, sometimes we don't see the bigger picture. But man, sometimes I get to see that picture when we go and see the work that we're doing and what we're pouring into, seeing hundreds of thousands of people coming to Jesus Christ and knowing the love of Jesus because of the efforts that we're giving. So we persist. I want to look at the last one here. You ever heard this? Maybe. And I was a mama's boy growing up, so I would always go to mom and I'd ask her for something and I would hear this Answer all the time. Ask your father. All right? Anybody else grow up in a house like this? If my mom said, ask my father, I already knew the answer. <laughs> Do you know what that answer was? No. So it would be one of those where I said, Mom, can I go to over my friend's house? Well, I know full well. She says, ask your father. That means no. Go grab a mower, boy. Get to work. Here we have this. It says, go ask your father. Verse 9, Jesus says, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. Which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if asked for an egg, will give him a scorpion? He who seeks finds and him who knocks, the door will be opened. If then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts... To your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? All right, so when we read of Jesus, when He says, ask your Father, what is He saying? We're asking of our true heavenly Father. I believe and I know that He knows what we need even before we ask of Him. The beginning of the Lord Prayer says to ask our Father for His will to be done on earth as it is where? In heaven. So what kind of things matter in heaven? Think about that for a moment. You think it matters about the next car we buy? Do you think it matters about our clothes or houses or things of that nature? What is the will of God the Father in heaven that we're supposed to be praying for here on earth? Well, the will of God the Father in heaven is 
peace, holiness, grace, love, kindness, compassion, goodness, forbearance, self-control, all these things that is the fruit of the Spirit. This is the will of God in heaven. And this is what you and I are to be learning and doing here on this earth. That we're spending our resources and time for that purpose and mission. So, if I ask you again, what are we to be learning or doing? Whatever it is to glorify Christ and to show the love of God the Father to this earth while we're here. This last part said, ask your Father what you should do and stay persistent. Pretty simple message, right? I don't know how all that began. I know I've told the story before, you know, Jeff Reed was sitting in the back nine years ago. We started on that mission and purpose. Don't know how it all really came about, but somehow we're here now. And as you know, this was our eighth deep water well provided to a village in the nation of Tanzania. This morning we celebrate that God has brought success once again to one of those projects. We're seeing churches again, and here's our problem right now, we need to pray on this, is that we have been working with the churches and and, uh, uh, mentoring new ministers and preachers for churches in that area, but we're going faster than our preachers are coming along. So now we are looking to Bible colleges and places to train young men in the ministry to keep up with the resources of the churches, all right? That's a good problem, but it's a big problem. It says, blessed are the feet of those who bring the good news. We need our harvesters. So I ask you to be praying on that. This morning for you, when you ask that question, and I want you to be asking that question here in service, God, what do you want me to do? Is that a question that you ask? Is it a question that you ask on a daily basis? God, what do you want me to do? Listen to what the Father says and then be persistent in it. Don't give up. Press on. Keep up the good fight. You know, as you've heard me say from this stage before, when I look at all the stuff that's been done and and the weeks and time spent in Tanzania, in my own personal view... I don't feel like I've done much. I'm not trying to downplay any of what's been done. I'm just saying there is so much work to do. God's given us the resources to be able to do it. Let's keep at it. So today we celebrate, but we also plan for the future. I want to put a vision in your minds that what's been done is only the start. Can you get on board with that? Again, I want to say thank you for my brothers and sisters in Tanzanian preachers, to all of you that have been a part of that and continue to be a part of it. You're making incredible changes in a nation of Tanzania. And it probably has a little broader scope than all of that. But just keep that in mind. Let me pray over us and we'll continue in praise and worship. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for being our Savior, for the truth that leads to salvation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for what you've given. Thank you for your provisions. Thank you for your blessings. Help us to never lose sight of it, to know that our purpose and mission in life is to glorify you, that we want to commune with you and learn to talk with you throughout the day, every day, growing and maturing in our faith. Lord, that we know that our identity comes from you alone, Jesus Christ, not from the world, not from our own personal experiences, but from you, Jesus Christ. And from that identity, being a child of God, because we have surrendered our lives to you, Jesus Christ, we have been set loose to spread the gospel, to be your servants, to be your hands and feet, to continue to tell others about you, Jesus to share love with the poor, to reach out and provide provision of clean water, resources, housing, whatever it may look like. Lord, I pray that you would just 
plant in us this day, that you, Holy Spirit, would put in us this day a great vision, a purpose to serve and to go forth. Thank you again for this time of praise and worship. Thank you for salvation in you, Jesus. I pray right now for each of us in this room that if any of us needs to surrender to you, uh, if we need renewal in you, that we would surrender to you here and now. It's in your almighty name, Jesus Christ, I ask and pray this. Amen. Would you please stand up if you can or kneel or however you want to praise and worship. Jesus, I want to encourage you to think about what you're singing, to sing it out loud and to mean it with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength as you praise and worship Jesus Christ. Speak to me when the silence steals my voice. You understand me. You understand me. Come to me in the valley of unknowns. You understand me. You understand me. You understand me, me, God. You understand me So I throw all my cares before you My doubts and fears don't scare you You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought So I stop all negotiations With the God of all creation You're bigger than I thought you were than I thought you were and I believe but help my unbelief you understand me you understand me Help me reach the faith that's underneath. You understand me. You understand me. You understand me, God. You understand me. So I throw all my cares before you. My doubts and fears don't scare you. You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought So I stop on negotiations With the God of all creation You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought you were Father's hands Leave the rest In the Father's hands I will rest In the Father's hands Leave the rest In the Father's hands I will rest In the Father's hands the rest in the Father's hands. I will rest in the Father's hands. Be the rest in the Father's hands. So I throw all my cares before you. My doubts and fears don't scare you. You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought So I stop all negotiations With the God of all creation You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger 
than I thought you were meal directly after church today would love for everyone to stay we got plenty of food ready for all of you to eat uh, i do have the drawings today of the winners are ivan and melinda robinson Uh, we do have Bible study coming up this week, 9.30 on Wednesday morning. We have youth group coming up on August the 13th, I believe. August 13th. And then a lifeboat meal coming up later on this month as well. Um, just quickly on lifeboat, we need prayer. We are in the search for a new director. If you are familiar with anybody in ministry or serving in that kind of capacity, we have a position there that we're looking to fill. So keep that in prayer. Pass the word around. Um, we're searching for that. Was there any, before I walk away, any questions of any of that mission stuff that you saw? Anything that... What are we trying to build? We're building right now water wells, an orphanage coming up. Uh, we've been building five schools right now. We just finished three, two church buildings this last year. And then that is our, was six, six church building, I think, over the time span. So we build or give resources as we can help out, you know, in those kind of endeavors. By the way, this is my mission when I'm there. We try to find pastors, preachers, and my heart is for preachers. So I pour into the ones that I see are really getting after it. Whatever we give them, they're putting twice as much into it that we give them. So that's kind of the rule of thumb. Anything else? What was that first name? Kenton Cook. Okay. All right. And I believe many of you knew, knew Evelyn Norton. She passed away a couple of days ago. Her funeral service is tomorrow. We will be having a funeral dinner for her uh, family tomorrow at around 2.30, 3 o'clock. So if anybody's available tomorrow to help out with that, it would be greatly appreciated. That was Dave Capps and Evelyn that used to sit back on the uh, left-hand side here of the church. All right, let me pray and we'll go ahead and dismiss. Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the privilege of worship. Thank you for uh, just the meal coming up and the provisions of that. Thank you for the good things that we celebrate here this day. Lord, I do lift it to these families that have lost loved ones. I just pray your hand of blessing on them as they go through this time and for the ministry and the people around to love on them and to show the love of you, Jesus Christ. Again, thank you that we put all of our hope in you, Jesus, and the eternal salvation that comes for you. It's in your almighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. darkness hope that's in the mud there's future grace that's mine today that Jesus Christ has won so I can face tomorrow for tomorrow's in your hands and all I need you will prove like you always have I'm fighting a battle you've already won no matter what comes my way I will overcome don't know what 
Show us for the fellowship no afterwards.